I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. We could, uh, we could actually talk. There's another big piece of news that came out, um, like, this well, was just this last, last week, right, about Samurai Wallet. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we could talk about, I mean, <laughs> that was, um, I, I'm bringing that, like, we could talk later about, like, what another implementation might that might look like, but that was pretty big news because people were yeah. using that. Um, how do you guys feel about mixing as a as a service? I should say that's what they were providing, right? Um, so that's that's a bit of a sensitive situation, right? Because yeah. <laughs> there is the privacy aspect, and then there is the illegal aspect with mm. the criminal association and all that. And obviously, the criminal things are like. For me, it's kind of the dumb thing they should never have done because in, in the source I've seen, uh, I've seen that they really were uh, basically advertising and targeting people who do illegal activities. And I, I think this is really um, a very bad thing. Now, I think we're all for privacy and yeah. we, I, I think that we don't have anything by default against mixers. Now we understand that. Uh, regulation is not really uh, welcoming to to those things. I wanted to bring an interesting number, actually. Um, what they are accused of is having transacted about $2 billion of volume mm -hmm. and having about $100 million uh, that is actually accused of being linked to criminal activities. So if you actually look at that number, it's it's about 5%. So even with that thing that was unregulated and that was, you know, basically... Um, probably one of the best avenue for criminals, the, the number is just at 5%. Yeah. It's that's... about the same number you have in fiat in the highly regulated environment. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> you have it highly regulated. Point. This is an unregulated and it's the same number. Yeah, that's right. exactly. It's also <laughs> funny. It's like, it's like that Elizabeth Warren garbage, right? She's like, oh, it's, you know, criminals are using it, using crypto. And it's like, it's like le way less than, than they use the dollar. And it's like 2% of, of transactions or some, some small, I can't remember what it was, a really small number of the transactions are, were found to be, you know, of criminal intent. It's such a, it's, it's really a garbage, uh, like they're not saving anybody. They're, you know, they're not, nobody's being harmed this way. Um, yeah. I, I, like, it, and when I say nobody, I mean, I am sure that there's a criminal that harmed somebody that used a mixing service. I'm sure that happened. But, you know, there's, like, they're going after, I'm not sure how this stops them, right? Because it, they're not stopped on the normal banks either. I think so. we have to separate <laughs> privacy and anonymity because those are really two separate things. Bitcoin has privacy, Litecoin has mm -hmm. privacy, Divi has privacy, right? Mm -hmm. So we have chains. They are private as long as you're not, um, obviously sharing your address is one way to right. make it so it's a little bit more public. Satoshi mm -hmm. didn't make an anonymity protocol, right? There's people who thought that he should have and thought that he could have, but he wanted to make sure a ledger was public and everybody could have a copy of it and everybody could validate that ledger. Um, so privacy is built in. I think really when we start getting into mixing, it goes beyond privacy and starts to build in or lean towards anonymity. And that's where it starts graying. And I'm not against anonymity at all or mm -hmm. pseudo anonymity or privacy. But, but the minute you start promoting a privacy service, Two criminals, you, yeah. you, you highlight that you're actually embracing illegal activity. Yeah. And if you there think that people uh, are going to ignore that, you're crazy. Yeah. There's, there was um, some secure phones companies, they're like they were making privacy phones. And then mm -hmm. it became very, there's a great, there's a great uh, episode on this on Dark Side Di Diaries. They were, they were doing exactly that. They were, they were advertising to, cartels and drug dealers and so forth about having a private phone <laughs> and wow. yeah they you know they got busted and then then the fun part is uh the feds did that themselves um so they had their own <laughs> of course they had their own phone company and they were selling privacy phones and they were attracting the criminals that i mean they were trying to do it so like 
Those guys aren't aren't dummies either. So like to go out and and, and be very blatant. I think you guys were reading the uh, the the advertising stuff before. To be blatant about it is just that's just a dumb move. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm all for mixing. Like I can imagine a lot of scenarios where I'm paying somebody for a while. Now they know that address is me. And I don't want that to happen anymore. So I'm going to take those funds and I want to mix them and to get it away from the person I was paying before. It's maybe none of their business, relationship. right? Exactly. So I can see a lot of scenarios where it makes sense to mix funds so that the people you know are you are no longer acquainted with can't attach addresses to you, um, or you know, or follow funds you know that are attached to you. They shouldn't. That's the privacy I want. The privacy. That's uh, right. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, in a way, um, I feel like it will be an even, big, an even bigger fight than the sovereignty one, because mm -hmm. really data is kind of at the center of how everything is sold today. Sure. So being able to track data um, is, is key for companies, for governments. Um, it has been so integrated into protocols and all yeah. the processes now that I feel it will be even harder. And to be able to fight on that, like we should basically already have sovereignty, right? We should already be in control of our funds, already in control of our nodes to be able to pretend um, to have some privacy. Because if you're going through an intermediary, you, you basically don't have any privacy, right? So right. I think it would be a very interesting situation. Now, obviously, um, as you mentioned, uh, advertising for criminal activity is really dumb and it's counterproductive because like, as you say, there are very legitimate use case. Um, you receive a payment. You don't want to group it with the rest of your money so mm -hmm. that the person who sent you $3 <laughs> is now able to see all your account and mm -hmm. everything. Like, obviously there, there is a huge use case for it. Now, um, those, those situation actually tainted, it, right? Yeah. Well, so, if, you, if Rob sends me a payment and it comes from his account, um, I see a payment come in. It doesn't share his whole account data with me. Um, so I, I can't really, unless he gives me his account and I have the tools to do it, and that's not necessarily publicly readily available to the average person. I can't query the account to get a balance, although that is possible. We know that debit cards do that and other services do that. That's a that's a both a governmental and a, again a data data privacy issue. But the average person can't do that. So it comes down to if you're paying the guy to mow your lawn and you pay him, does he need to know that you have four Bitcoin in there or a million divi or whatever it doesn't really matter it, it 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 you should be able to pay now remember most of these blockchains have a privacy mechanism in them they have change address so you're always using in many cases a new address where this really becomes a problem is people who use um light wallets right light wallets will use usually uh, um either one or maybe a few addresses like you'll get one for a a taproot address, you get a BEC32, you get a, a legacy address. You really only have three addresses. And so unless you're an advanced user and you're using light wallets, um, anybody can know what you have. And there's nothing wrong with that, um, but it, 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 it does ruin your privacy a little bit. So if you use a service that is also has an API, it has to broadcast transactions through an API, or it has to query your transactions through an API, you get into that data situation. There is no privacy really in those data situations because all that, that, that endpoint has to do is watch for your address. That's why running your own nodes is far more important. Um, running so your own wallet is far more important. You were mentioning important. about the change address and all that. Yeah. Um, you're familiar with like situations like chains, right? The thing is that if you are using your wallet long enough, at some point, like if you receive the payment for something, right? Like let's say I send sure. you now $3 on an address that you shared with me or that I found of yours, mm -hmm. right? For any reason. And then I send you dust on it, right? And so at some point you will make a send and it will use, it will use that dust to send out. And that's where some links will be able to be done with 
you of know, course. your other addresses of course. and uh, explorers like chains who have a database and probably some algorithm to be able to link those addresses together um, will be able to highlight that. And so with one address, if that address has been used enough by that wallet, you will be able to identify one, two, some, potentially all of the addresses that have been used of the wallet. So it, yeah. it is still, unless you are a very advanced user and start to use your UTXO individually to make sure that it doesn't share, it doesn't send, use another UTXO to combine it. Um, but then it, it it is actually, like nobody actually does that. Yeah. It's, so, it's And even services like chains are imprecise and they're imperfect. Yeah. It, it depends upon if I'm paying you often and if I'm using, um, uh, even if I'm using change uh, addresses and all those kinds of things, often it's that interrelationship between known wallet addresses and your addresses that starts building sort of a breadcrumb trail. And that's a privacy issue for chains. It has a feature, but I mean, look at what Zach XBT has. I mean, he's, he's got tools that you can pull that out of any blockchain right so not mm -hmm. just um ethereum of but yeah, yeah. It, but block let's just say this we're we're talking about utxo blockchains where you are the bank really where privacy becomes a concern is a hundredfold more so on evm accounts based blockchains it, it, there is of course you can't even easily today spend from multiple uh, uh, the average user cannot spend today, although I think they're trying to work on that. I'd have to read up more on it. Spend from multiple addresses at the same time or move funds from one address to another. It, it's always going to be related to that one account. And so that's why, of course, people use things like Tornado Cash, which is another mm -hmm. one that has a had a mixing service in it. Um, also some scammers, by the way, forked that, I think that I heard. Um, so be careful when you're using those <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, so when you're using those services, you're not necessarily doing illicit activities. You're just like, man, I don't need everybody to see. I don't, I don't need my, well, again, I use my, uh, you know, the, the guy who's mowing my lawn, he doesn't need to see that my Ethereum account has, you know, 150 Ethereum. I wish it did 150 <laughs> Ethereum in there. Um, you know, cause I'm paying him, you know, you know, 50 USDT maybe this week for the lawn. Um, you know, so he doesn't need to see what I have in there. And yeah, yeah that's exactly the problem. There's nothing especially wrong with, with that. Yeah. Especially I was just thinking you don't even need chains or anything like basic use of a block explorer. I look at where I, where I got funded from. I, I can go back where those funds came from. And then if it, I, I, I eventually get to a. Uh, an address that has some staking in it and I see some funds coming. I assume that that's my, that's the address and I can see yeah. more things that way. And like, if I'm, you know, if people hold millions in, of Divi in an address, now you know how much that is. It doesn't really matter which crypto, of course, but that's the thing is like that same person I'm doing business with now has leverage about the next time they quote me. Like I know that guy has, you know, $200 million or whatever it is that <laughs> no, that gets right. exposed without a way to cleave the connection between what I own and what I paid somebody. Uh, so I'm 100%. definitely for the existence of mixers. Uh, I, th I think it should be done in a decentralized way. Like I think Dash does it that way. Um, I definitely think a mixing service chain could exist. I just would not want to be the one developing the front end for that. Um, I just, I mean, I, I, I hope our technology it, like inspires somebody to make a mixing chain, connects different blockchains to it, um, and that they're not in America. <laughs> like, like, that's, Let's, how about yeah, this? I wouldn't do this? it. <laughs> yeah, because you can it's, see that even with Litecoin, right? They came yeah. with the Mimble Wimble, yeah. and like how they many people started use to it? be delisted everywhere, right? Yeah. But when it was understood, or that's my understanding, that in fact it's not the same addresses and all that, like basically they decided to not accept anything that's coming from Mimble Wimble, but still have Litecoin. Exactly. Right? Still have the Litecoin. I think the but point is this. That, yeah. They really reject it. I think it comes down to this. If you break the law and you're using blockchain, you're going to get in trouble. It's a public ledger. Just 
don't break the laws. It just don't do criminal activity where you're stealing coins from somebody else. And then think that at some point in time, you're not going to get caught or don't embrace those people who do do those crimes and publicly announce that you embrace people who are doing crimes, whether you agree that they're criminal or not. It doesn't matter if the world says this is something we're doing. If you think that the those they that be aren't going to look at you when you say come over here and you promote that you're crazy you're crazy they're not going to see you as some Robin Hood. <laughs> if you break the law use fiat if you break the law use fiat <laughs> yeah. exactly it's yeah easier. which is what everyone does mostly right yeah <laughs> Just don't, it's just not like crypto is marginal. If you actually look at frauds and totally. criminal activities, yeah. crypto is almost nothing. It's and almost they nothing to tolerate, compared to the fiat. They, they yeah. tolerate it more in fiat. <laughs> they do tolerate it more. They, I think it the embrace your it, network. That's, uh, that's what right. some of the banks have been in trouble for is embracing, <laughs> yeah. you know, the whole joke about, uh, you know, oligarchs using samurai. Um, the fact is, is that if you Google enough and you look yeah. up enough and look at the many huge fines that these different banks have received for doing exactly the same thing but really doing it within the guidelines of the banking services and literally opening up accounts and allowing money laundering from drug money and and scarily people and all sorts of stuff your banking services have all been in trouble for that in in the tunes of many billions yeah. of dollars i think jp morgan's yeah, the biggest most one yeah, it might be. I'd have to look in, into it again, but I, I, there are some really big ones out yeah, there. That's why he doesn't like crypto. It's competition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For that. Exactly. Yeah, maybe so. But I mean, yeah. you can see that every time. They, what they have to pay is nothing. They get a slab on the wrist and then, bye. Yeah. You can continue now. Yeah. It is, it is always the same. <laughs> but in fact, we can see that when you are high enough, that's that's the treatment you get look at what happened with the big <laughs> exactly. exchange it's the yeah. same thing exactly it's exactly what it is if, you, if you're big enough they're not gonna bother <laughs> right. you unless somebody you complains their, and then they'll slap you piece. with a small they just fine. Want their piece of the cake yep <laughs> yeah 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 and all right, privacy coins. So we're not, not against privacy coins. We are a privacy coin, but not in the way of right. anonymity coins. Bitcoin is a privacy coin, but it's not an anonymity coin. There are anonymity coins, and if it's on-chain, no big deal. But if it's a mixer mm -hmm. and an API and a service and you're bragging about it, you're going to get caught and it's going to be painful. <laughs> <Right. So. laughs>